In this video, we are going to build some custom S2000 taillights. This is going to be based on the Alumastetic S2000 DIY LED kit. The kit comes with two boards, a right side and a left side, pre-cut, pre-bent. Also, it comes with LEDs and a resistor pack. But you're obviously going to need much more than that. You're going to need a set of taillights. They are right up there in that box. I really don't want to get them out yet. Something to open the taillights with, like an ultrasonic cutter. This is exactly what we are going to use to open up the taillights. If you don't want to spend $500 on an ultrasonic cutter, you can use a Dremel. This is the Dremel that we have. I got the extension with the uh, diamond bit just to get a thinner cut on it. That'll make it a little bit cheaper for you. Once you have it open, you're obviously going to need a soldering iron plus some solder to actually build the kit, plus some wire to actually build the kit. You can use the provided dimming module that comes with the kit if you want to. We are actually going to use a ghost module because this customer wants a show mode. Side note, if you want a plug and play sequential turn, get a course of motion module. This little thing inside your taillights will give you a plug and play sequential turn. It's not necessary, but I do it every time with a set like this. Uh, I use a paint pen to mark up the back so that we can visualize where all the LEDs are going to go because there are going to be three different colors on here with several different packs. So it's just easier if we go through at first, mark everything. After everything has been built, you can then plastic weld it. This is a plastic welder. We will also use some black silicone to make it completely waterproof. Step one of this process is to grab your board and mark up the back of the board with a paint pen so that we can visualize where the LEDs are going to go. To do this correctly, we need to look at the cheat sheet that Illumisthetic puts in all of the kits. You have to do groups of three, four, or five for for most of the LEDs, obviously white is gonna be different on both of them, but you also need to make sure that they have dimming or they do not have dimming. So if you're just trying to go with a plug and play setup, no show mode or anything, it's gonna look different on the back than what we are about to do. Since we have show mode, all of our LEDs are going to have a slight dimming function. I'm gonna program it so that it starts dimming and it'll move and do all kinds of dances. So we are gonna work off of this specific one, but if you aren't doing that, you can work on this one right here. And that's how you can actually build out, especially your turn signal and your reverse. Your red LEDs, you're definitely gonna need dimming. Well, I did accidentally start marking on this a little bit before we got started, but uh, that's okay. So we're just gonna do it again on camera. Step one is to separate each of the LED colors so that we can visualize where the red and the yellow and the white are gonna be. Okay, there we go. Now that this is completely marked up, each of the sections are marked off, I'm going to go ahead and write down the numbers of each of the resistors that we're going to need. So, for example, this red one is going to be a group of three that does have dimming, so it was going to take a... 470 ohm resistor that's going to be one resistor on the top and one resistor on the bottom so what i like to do is write right in between there 470. of course you can see my other side that we've already started garrett is working on that one so i went ahead and matched it so that whenever we do fire up the show mode the led sections are going to match from side to side There we go. Now that everything is marked, we can actually start putting the LEDs in. And personally, I like to start with the center row. Whatever color that's going to be for you, I like to start there because it's easier to work with. You're going to have all of these LEDs in there with the cathodes and anodes sticking out. Uh, it's kind of hard to work around if you're having to, if you start from the outside and go in, you have to kind of go over it, to me, I found it was just easier if I just start in the middle and work my way out. As you start installing these LEDs, it's important to pay attention to the direction of the LEDs that you're installing. So I've got the shorter lead right here 
facing that direction. I'm personally going to just match that all the way down. Obviously, LEDs are directional. It's called a light emitting diode. Diodes are directional. So when we start to solder all of these together, we're going to need to make sure that the positive and negatives are all facing the same direction so that whenever they connect, the electricity can actually flow through all of them and make good contact. That is all of the reverse lights done. Uh, instead of jumping straight to the wires, I'm going to go ahead and do the yellow LEDs next so that uh, all the wires aren't in the way. Okay, this is finally starting to take shape here, especially if we flip it over. We've got all the LEDs in place where they should be. So what we have to do now is wire in the actual power and ground wires. To do this, I'm going to run a single power wire through the brake, through the turn, and then through the reverse. All of those are going to get wired into the Blue Ghost module. It has a 12 volt section. It's all going to have constant 12 volt power. Then the way that the Ghost module controls which LEDs turn on is by switching the grounds on. So when I go to wire in the grounds, we are going to wire up two of these little packs. So this right here is going to be one, then two, then three, then four, and so on, all the way around. That goes for the turn signal and the reverse as well. So when we are done with this board, it's going to be kind of like this, where it's got all of the grounds just falling off of it, where it's got all of the grounds just kind of stringing out everywhere. We will go back later and clean all that up. With all of that installed and completely wired up, it's time to start installing the ghost module onto the board. To be completely honest, I already started and forgot to film the first four wires, but I'm gonna go ahead and catch you up. Like we said at the beginning, this is a V5 ghost module that we have wired a 30 pin connector with two pins removed because the ghost module is a 28 pin. We have soldered this connector to the board through the holes there. We have this connector that snaps right in just like that. So what we're gonna do now is take all of these and wire them directly to the grounds on this taillight board. You can see that I've done the first four already. Now, I'm not sure why I always do this, but I always start in the middle. So this right here is one and it's gonna work its way out and then we'll probably hop back over here. This is going to be five and it's gonna work this way and then we'll jump down here and go back around. In the Ghost program, you can change where everything starts. It's completely customizable. So if you wanted to turn on, let's say pin number 10, whatever pin that's gonna be on here, whatever LED group is on here, then you can turn just that one light on. That's just an example. I don't know why you would do that. Don't really do that, that looks bad. I am going to set you up on a tripod and we are gonna get a time lapse of wiring all of these ground wires to the rest of this ribbon cable. All of the grounds are officially wired in. Now all we need to do is this one power wire. So since we actually have all of the powers running together, it's gonna to be very simple. So on the ghost module, you'll see this pack of six right here, if it would focus. Bottom of the module, you can actually see that it says 12 volt. So all six of these pins here are going to be a 12 volt output. So as soon as you wire any wire to it, it's gonna have 12 volts once, of course, you plug it in. Okay, that was probably hard to see because this little thing is really hard to focus on but we did solder to it. Now I'm going to wire in the input wires. So we've got 
power and ground here. Also the input for your brake park turn and show mode all right here. It is so hard to focus. Also your brake park turn and show mode all right here. Input four is like a startup feature if you wanna run a wire up to your keys. So you can have a little startup feature. We personally don't offer that because it gets really confusing to tell the customer how to wire it up. What we're gonna use to wire that in is some four wire LED wire. Since we're only using four of the inputs out of the five, the four wire is perfect. And for our power and ground, we have this really long red and black wire that we are going to put in a loom. I'm so used to building lights that already have the reverse LEDs in them and that they're not gonna get modified. So when I said we're only gonna use four inputs, that was wrong, we're gonna use five. We fix it later. The power and ground, we're going to run about three to four feet. Uh, what I typically do is I run it right out of the taillights. I have it designed so that it runs down and kind of meets here in the middle. And then from the middle of the car, it'll run all the way up to the hood and the battery area. So for the wires coming off of this right now, it needs to be about three to four feet long. There we go. So our power and ground wire is installed. I went ahead and put the input wires on there as well. So the next thing that we need to do is actually program the lights. Uh, this is so that we can actually test all of the LEDs all at once instead of having to go in individually. Uh, and also it's just that time. It's time to put the whole program in there for every single uh, input that we have going into the lights. To program the lights, you need a picket Three. That's what's going to actually flash the program onto the ghost module. Then there are two programs that you're going to need on a computer, specifically a Windows computer, to actually flash these lights. The first program that we're going to use is called Sequence Designer, which is a program that Ghost Lighting actually created. It is on their website. It's a free download and you can go in and you can mess with the whole program. Even if you don't own a Ghost module, you can just go in and start messing with it. You can see right up here is where all of the channels are that we're going to use. The channels is what each of the grounds are called on the Ghost module itself. So we are specifically going to use 24 of the 28 channels. Uh, this is supposed to be the left side, but since the lights are the same on either side, we're just going to flash the same program in the left side and in the right side. We went in and went ahead and added all of the reverse turn and brake lights. Next up is to go down here. Down here is where the actual program is going to happen. You can see I went ahead and did a show mode. They have a few pre-programmed show modes in there that really help speed things up because this would take forever to do by hand. You would have to do each individual line and that would take forever. So we did a quick one. They have a few more show modes that I'm gonna add in there. So it's gonna be pretty long. I am gonna go ahead and start adding in functions for the turn break park and uh, probably gonna edit the show a little bit so that it's longer and looks a little bit better for this specific car. So let's go ahead and put it on the time lapse. If you're gonna use this program, I wanted to show you a trick that's gonna kind of speed things up. Instead of coming over here and clicking each individual square like this to turn them on and off, all you need to do is actually just hit the corresponding number up here. So that one's three, you can see it turned right off. So we'll go up here, we need to turn all of these off because this is a turn signal. We do not want the reverse lights on. There we go. Go ahead and delete a few of those. Leave the first one blank. And now we can start working on just the amber lights. Real quick, also in that same vein, if you're trying to do numbers above 10, channels above 10, you need to hit control. So we need to get 14, that takes care of 14. If you're trying to do numbers above 20, you need to hold down Alt and then hit the corresponding number that you're trying to do. So that right there was 22. We're gonna hit that twice to turn it back off because we don't need it. We have the turn signal all set up in here. So we can go in and hit simulate. Uh, it is gonna ask you to save it. I typically just save it as whatever the car is that we're working on plus the mode so in this case s2000 turn here we go so that is what it's going to look like on the car itself 
And if you start messing with this and you notice in the turn signal section, you can't actually adjust the speed here. The speed is obviously how fast the light turns on and turns off. You can't adjust the speed because the turn signal actually adjusts to the car. So whenever you build a set of these, all you need to do is turn on your hazards and the turn signal will adjust to the turn signal speed of the car because every car has a different turn signal speed. Also, one thing that we need to do before I forget is click independent brake because we have the turn signal here and the brake is up here we also need to click brake brake timeout i like to shorten this personally i like to do uh since we're going to have like an f1 style brake i like to shorten it so that the f1 style happens more often but you can space that out a little bit more if you want to so it only happens once every once in a while but now we're going to do brake this is just going to be our basic f1 style once we go into here scroll down and we'll find the f1 style brake make sure you do 28 channel instead of 20 the 20 channel skips 28 channel bring that in you can see that's already set up don't even click anything else park open sequence now this is one that we will have to change around a little bit and i'll probably end up doing like a custom version because it's gonna be pretty messed up whenever we open the file so we're gonna switch it back to a time lapse And this is what I'm gonna go with with the parking light. I personally love whenever it sweeps here and then back to turn on the parking light. It's kind of hard to tell since it keeps looping, but it's gonna start with the bright lights and then sweep back with the dim lights for parking and it'll end on the actual dim lights. I personally like the speed of that, so we're just gonna leave it like that. So let's double check. We've got turn, brake, park, and we've got a little bit of show. So what I'm gonna do now is actually modify the show here. I like the start of this, this big long thing here, but we're gonna go ahead and add probably one to two more pieces. I typically go with about 1500 to 2000 steps. The nice thing is whenever you go to compile it, it'll tell you if it's too big, if the file's too big or not, then you can come back in and change the show mode to be a little bit smaller. Unfortunately, whenever you're building out a show mode that's a pretty decent size, uh, the sequence cannot be saved and you can't preview it before you actually put it on the lights. So the only way for us to actually test it is to put it on the lights. Let's go ahead and do that. Once you have finished messing with all of your program and you're ready to upload it onto your actual ghost modules, it's time to, it's time to save this into the correct file to actually be uploaded. So we need to come over here and hit compile. It's going to automatically save it. So this was not successful in the next page. It's gonna tell me why. Most likely it's because the file's too big. Yep, so if you look right there, we used 100.1% the memory of these modules, which means I need to go into our show mode and take out several of these steps. But we have to do it so that it looks natural. There we go. So without those 100 steps, it now used 96%. Now this is where we will be using the Picket 3. So the way you do this is you see the arrow, you need to line the arrow up with the square on the actual ghost module. Let's go ahead and bring this in closer so you can see it. This right here, the J2 is where you're gonna program. That square is where the arrow goes. So we're gonna take that, set it in like that. I always try to make sure that it's at an angle so it makes good contact. If you're gonna reflash them a lot, then you can actually solder pins to it and just reprogram it whenever you want. 
we are not going to do that. This is probably going to be flashed once, maybe twice, and then we will install it inside the car. Whenever you download the sequence designer, Ghost also has an option for you to download an app called MP Lab X I P E. This program here, this program here only works on a Windows computer, which is why I have this really crappy $80 laptop. Okay, I went ahead and just opened a brand new one so that all of this was clear and you can see exactly where to go to get everything open. So what I want to do is actually supply power from the USB here, from the Picket 3 and the computer. Uh, but to do that, we need to open advanced mode, just like this. Uh, the password, it says, Password is microchip. So we're gonna type in microchip here. And that is going to open up the advanced mode over here. We need to go to power, power target circuit from picket three. Yes, it's gonna do 3.25 volts. I would just leave it right there. I've never changed it and it's always worked just fine. This selected, once you've selected that you want to power it up from the picket three, you can go back over here and hit connect. If everything is working as it should, it will go ahead and connect. It will confirm it down here. This is kind of where all the info is. Okay, this is just a little warning telling you that you could break things if you selected the wrong voltage, will be fine. It is still connecting. Once you have your Picket 3 connected, it is time to come over here and grab the hex file that we saved earlier. So mine is named S2000 taillights. We just saved it. Go ahead and open. It shows here that the hex file has been loaded successfully. Once we do that, I'm gonna hit program. And it says programming complete. As you can see, it actually erases it and then programs it, which is good. Okay, so before I do any testing, I always disconnect the Picket three from the lights before I supply power to it because this is putting out three volts but we're about to supply 12 volts to it and I'm I have a feeling that's gonna cause some some major damage if we leave that plugged in so I would like to test all of the inputs but the most fun one is obviously going to be our show mode I know that that is this one so go ahead and wrap that and turn it on Hopefully all of our LEDs are good. So far, looks great. Show mode looked good, so it's time to test everything else. Let's do input one, which is brakes. Ooh, we did not do that properly. You can see I turned on all of the channels, which means that everything on this light turned on at the same time. We can go ahead and change the program and reflash it, but let's test everything else first. So next up, we got the turn signal. And you can see that it's moving slow, which would definitely be way too slow for an actual car. But if I just keep doing this at the exact same pace, the turn signal will eventually relearn the speed. And now you can tell that it's going much, much, much faster. Really cool feature of the ghost module. Next up is the parking lot. Okay, so it looks pretty good. I kinda think it needs to be sped up. Also something weird is happening here. We actually have some homework to do on these. First thing that we need to do is change up the brake lights. Uh, we can't have all of the LEDs lighting up at the exact same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that. And some of you may have noticed that I forgot to put the reverse light on these lights. So uh, went ahead and programmed that in. We fixed the brake and the reverse. Uh, and we're gonna fix the two channels that are mixed up. I think it's just a wiring thing. So I'm just gonna disconnect one and the other, flip them back and forth. Now we can actually test the reverse lights real quick. I don't have a wire in there, so I have to do it at the board. That looks good. And let's test the brake lights. Oh, okay. If you noticed really closely, they all flashed once, which means that somewhere in here, they're still on. I went ahead and came over and realized I didn't scroll up. Because I didn't scroll up, I left half of the light on that it shouldn't be. So I have to do it one These more boards time. are completely built out and programmed. Everything tested good, so now it's time to actually get the lights out of the box. There we go. I love these taillights. They're relatively basic, but they have that nice clear lens, 
which gives us a lot of possibilities. Of course, we're gonna build these and put them in there, but you can do many, many things, especially with color shifting. And if you're good at infinity mirrors, these are perfect for them. Y'all know that I like to do the how to open videos, and I have not done a how to open S2000 taillight video yet. So I am going to work on that right now. When I wrap that up, then we will be right back to building out this taillight with that board. And if you want to see how to open these S2000 taillights, you could just go to that video. It should already be up. And there we go. Lens is off, and we are ready to start mocking up this board and figure out how it's going to fit in here. First, we got to get that out of there. So there we go next up we got to take out these little reflector deals so i'm gonna do that just by putting the screwdriver here popping it out one at a time so now we need to do some test fitting first thing i do when test fitting is make sure that all the wire that we have in here that needs to go out the back can actually reach out the back and usually we're pretty good about this because we just put a lot of wire on there and next up is to make sure that the board will fit and if it doesn't we need to figure out where to cut see how much that's sticking up that means that we need to cut out probably a section like this big so that this will sit completely flush on the back housing there so when i am going to cut i'm trying to cut as little material as possible but also not spend forever doing recuts so if I set this here and look at where this is actually hitting, it's clearly hitting right here. I am probably going to cut quite a big chunk out of this up front and then retest after. So I'm probably gonna do about maybe two inches in and then try to follow the body line. So follow this curve all the way around. Thing goes for the inside here, we're probably gonna have to come down and chop about, like right about there. I've done this a few times. I've built several different sets of lights. I've never built S2000. So that's why I kind of have a relative good idea of how far in we need to go. One thing I am nervous about is this little lip. I'm not gonna touch the front of it just in case, but this lip right here that you see, I'm afraid that this piece may need to cut out. This part up here looks like it may clear, but this bottom one doesn't look like it's gonna clear. There we go, we got that completely trimmed out. And before you freak out, there is some massive holes in here. All of that will be patched up using some plastic welding and some additional plastic after we're done with getting this housing to sit in here. You don't do it before because you don't know if you're gonna have to cut it out again. So once we get this inner housing to sit in there where it should, then we can come back and start messing with this. So the next step here is to test fit the inner housing, the inner board, and it looks pretty good. I can't quite tell if this is where this is intended to sit. So I think what I'm gonna do is rest it here and then put the lens on and see what happens. Just get a better idea of what's going on here. Okay, I think it's gonna work. There's this bulge right here in the lens. So the board is actually gonna fit really nicely over there and it doesn't have to wrap completely around. So now we need to take the lens back off, get this board set properly in place and then the lens can go back on. Okay, we definitely need to get this stuff set in place though. So I'm actually gonna, what I typically do with the modules that I put in here, whether it be course of motion or ghost, uh, I typically glue them in place on the back housings here so that they're not bouncing around and causing any issues. Um, and then for the wiring, I am going to go ahead and add some more electrical tape around so that this is a little more organized. It was more organized whenever it wasn't trying to bunch up together right here. So we're gonna do that real quick. Okay, I'm glad I didn't continue because I totally forgot I meant to paint this. Uh, if there's silver in there, especially right here in this corner area, it's pretty easy to see whenever you're looking pretty closely at the light. Um, and just to add the extra detail in, we're gonna go ahead and paint all of this just a basic matte black so that it kind of just fades out into the distance and you can't even see it. Quick tip flat black primer just like this stuff right here matches almost exactly to what 
the housing itself is already coated in. Okay, with it all painted black, we can now go ahead and get our module set in place. And then we're gonna set the board in place. Unfortunately, once we set the board, we have to let everything cure up because we're gonna use a glue that takes a little bit of time to actually cure. I like it because when we need to, we can take it back off. All we need to do is heat it up a little bit. Now, this stuff here that I'm using is an instant cure, but uh, it's a lot, lot, lot harder to take off. What we're gonna do now that the module is actually set in place is set the board up where we want it to sit. Okay, with the board set where we want it to actually sit inside the tail light, we are going to go ahead and tape it down. And the way that I glue boards like this where you can't actually get to the sides is I'm going to drop the glue from the back and aim it at the corner here, right where the board and the housing meet so that you can't actually see it from the front because we want it to look really clean. This board has had at least 12 hours to cure up, so I'm calling that good. It seems really, 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 really sturdy. So we can go ahead and peel the tape off. And before we do anything else, uh, we need to test it. Testing is definitely gonna be the most important thing when it comes to building any sort of set of lights. So we're gonna go ahead, hook all of this up to the power supply and test everything. That looks good, make sure y'all can see that. Break, turn, show, park. Okay, and right before I peel this brown paper off, I wanna go ahead and prep the lens. You can see the lens kind of has some smudges here on the outside. I just wanna make sure that they are on the outside. So what we need to do is just clean it up. We're gonna use some rubbing compounds, some spray wax, and a couple other things just to try and get these lenses looking really fresh. Okay, that lens is looking much better. So now what we are going to do is gonna go ahead and get the trough filled in with some fresh butyl from retro rubber stretch that out so that it actually fits now we can finally peel the paper off of this thing hopefully it comes off clean sometimes it can leave the adhesive residue on there especially where it's been bent so like you see all these little bubbles Behind there is probably just some residue, which kind of sucks, and we'll have to clean off the board. Oh, so much better. That was so much smoother than the other side, and look how clean that came off. That's amazing. So I'm gonna hurry and get this lens on before it gets any dust on it. But first I gotta clean, just do one final compressed air right here so that it cleans all the dust that's in the lens. The lens sandwich down as much as we can with our hands. We're not trying to force it. If you force it, it will break. So now that it's held in just enough for it to hold by itself, it's time to put it back in the oven for at least eight to 10 minutes, and then we can sandwich it all together. Well, I forgot to explain what I was doing there, but I obviously took it out of the oven and then I got it clamped up. We like to use the microfibers to not scratch the lens. And we are going to leave it like this for a few minutes so that the butyl can cool off. And then we're gonna check and make sure that all the tabs are set back in place. Now that these lights are assembled, it's time to actually wire them up. You can see that I went ahead and started over here because it's actually kind of difficult to figure out which wires go to which input, meaning I don't, I can't really tell which ones are supposed to go to brake, park, turn, reverse, because these didn't come with the actual bulb sockets, so I couldn't even test from the back. But the way that we are going to make these plug and play for the customer, that way he doesn't have to do anything, is that we purchased a set of AP2 to AP1 converters. This side is for the AP1. That's what this customer's vehicle is, is an AP1 S2000. He can plug in here. And this side is meant to plug into the AP2 LED taillights but we're working with a set of AP1s, but we are building LED taillights. So to keep it plug and play, we're gonna use this. 
I spent far too long looking at pictures and trying to find diagrams online of what each of the wires actually does. So I think I was able to figure out what they do. First thing we need to do is to run our reverse wire out of this hole because this is the reverse light socket. And we are going to have a little connector that plugs in here so that we can actually twist it in place. So we're gonna go ahead and separate out the reverse light wire. Scratch that first thing we're gonna do is figure out which one of these is the reverse light wire. Obviously, if I had thought ahead just a little bit more, then I would have ran this wire out of the correct hole, but um, I did not. So we have to fish this metal line all the way through the light and out this hole so that I can feed the wire through the correct. Oh, well that took forever. Okay, we're gonna wire that part up in a bit, but right now I wanna go ahead, wanna get the show mode wire extended so that it's just as long as the power and ground wire right here because we need to get it to line up with this remote activated relay. We also need to loom it. There we go, we got those connectors wired up. You can see that we have two not wired up on the connectors. That's because those are the OEM grounds, which we do not have to use. The ghost module itself is actually grounded with this wire. I did use to wire up the ground wire for the ghost module to be internal to the taillights since they have to plug them in either way, but it did find that it would make things act really really weird if it wasn't plugged in exactly right like we would have issues where one show mode would just continue to go no matter what you do if you didn't have it wired up and plugged in properly so i found it was easier for everybody if i just wire it up inside the power harness already they're gonna have to run it up to the battery no matter what so might as well just put the ground there once you do power and ground it should work just fine. Now we are going to run this into our relay and we need to get one more wire that's going to be very, very long to actually run up to the battery. So this is just the harness that runs out of the taillights and it's gonna be sitting in the trunk. And then we're gonna have one more that runs the length of the vehicle. There we go, that is our full power wire. I even have it hooked up to our 12 volt source. So what we're gonna do now is test it and make sure everything is wired up correctly. Um, I forgot to put in the fuse. Let's try this one more time. It's fused, it's on, they're connected and go. There we go, show mode is working. Okay, so now we know that the show mode is wired up as it should be. So what we need to do now is actually wire in some three pin connectors right here at the back of each of the taillights for the power ground and show. We do this so that it is actually really easy for the customer to wire everything up. I try to design it so that it is as easy to plug in as possible. If a customer has never installed anything like this before, it's still super self-explanatory. So since it's the same on either side, we are going to wire up the connectors the exact same direction. So we're probably gonna do both of them just like this so that whenever the customer gets the harness, all that they will need to do is plug it in to both sides and they're good to go. I've already showed you a whole lot of wiring, so I'm probably not gonna film this part. This connector is officially wired in on both sides, so now the customer can actually have a harness that disconnects. It'd be easier to install the tail lights. As you can see, the show modes are still working, so I did wire it up correctly. And one really important thing that we need to do is patch the holes here. You can do this a couple of different ways. Uh, one way that I used to do quite a bit is I would just save the pieces of plastic that we cut out, and I would melt that into place, but from the back. Now we actually have several sheets of plastic just like this that are from Illumisthetic for the diffused 
LED kits. So what I'll do now is I will just cut this to shape and plastic weld it in place. But no matter what I do after plastic welding, either the main piece back in there or this extra piece of plastic here, I will silicone it so that it is watertight. Several hours of plastic welding later, we got this thing all completely sealed up. One thing I like to do is just go ahead and spritz it with some matte black paint so that it just completely blends in there. And as you can see, we have this wired up looking a little bit more OEM. Of course, it's never gonna look fully OEM whenever you're doing mods like this. We definitely need to do so a few more tests to make sure that this is functioning as it should. This is the reverse light. And from all the research I did online, it looks like I did wire it up to the power wire. And like we said, this is the adapters here with our little show mode wiring right here. So to me, everything is looking pretty good. Of course, on-car testing could always change that. I'm gonna try and find a local car, but I might not be able to. It's actually really hard to find a local car. Still wrapping up on this side. As you can see, we still have a little bit of plastic welding to do, and we have to clean up this wiring. This just looks horrendous. So I'm gonna get that done, but beforehand, I just wanted to show you what it looked like one more time when it was on. Okay, we have supplied 12 volts to it. Let's go ahead and test with the remote. Oh, amazing. Everything is working as it should. Show mode is looking pretty sick. 